Hi, and welcome to bonus episode number four of the Young Storytellers Club. Today, we're going to be working with a fun word game that's called Mad Lips. I can't wait to learn about these because I've never done them before. Um, so my name is Elise, and um, I'm one of the mentors for the uh, Young Storyteller Club, and I'm really excited to be here with you again. Cleo? Yeah, I'm Cleo, also a mentor. I'm sure you remember us all, but nice to see you again, and hopefully it's nice to see us again, too. And my name is Madeline, and I'm so glad you guys could join us this week. So before we begin, we're going to go over a bit on what a Mad Lib is. So Mad Libs start with short stories or sentences or even just phrases, but they're not the normal stories or um, sentences you would hear in real life because there are some words missing throughout the story and where there would be words, they're filled with blank spaces. So if you can see this picture right to the right of the screen, um, it has a short story but certain words are missing and it just has little blank spaces. So how to fill it in is without reading the story first, you replace the blank spaces with the words they like explain. So we're gonna go over in a second what kind of words you fill it in with, but as you can see here on the example, they filled in the first blank with the word suitcase. And usually the result is really funny and unique. Yep, so moving right along to how do we fill in a Mad Lib? Well, as you can see in this photo, in the fill in the blanks, they have words, uh, suggestions, such as a type of container, an adjective, a noun, or, but there's also verbs. So let's go to the next slide. So, what we do in Mad Libs is you're not supposed to know what the story is beforehand, and, but instead you're just supposed to um, give an example of a random noun, verb, or adjective. And it's supposed to be, like Madeline said, very funny and unique. So let's go over what these are. Um, nouns, verbs, and adjectives are referred to as parts of speech because they are types of words that you use when you talk to people with everyday things. So nouns specifically refer to different per, um, like examples of person, places, and things. An example of a noun would be notebook. That would be a thing, right? Otherwise, for nouns, there's a lot of different nouns. So in your prompt, there might have been like, instead of saying noun, they might say, a um, give, an, give a type of food or give a person. But nouns is in general, um, people, places, and things. Meanwhile, verbs are actions. They're something that you do. So verbs specifically can be actions, uh, processes, conditions, or states of being. So what that means, like actions, an example of an action is playing, but also could, it could be running, it could be jumping, something like that. Um, processes is a bit stranger. It'd be more of a, maybe it'd be building? I don't know. Or like Actually. melting? Like melting yes. is a process? Mm -hmm. There we go. And conditions or states of being, it'd be how a person is right now, but like like melting also falls under that. Verbs yeah, is like just- Smiling. Oh yeah, definitely. But yes, those are verbs. Next is adjectives. Adjectives describes a noun and gives details to it. So like the example of friendly, there's a friendly water bottle, water bottle, or maybe a, um, like a happy smile. There we go. But yes, these are the parts of speech. So now let us try 
doing an example of Mad Lib. So here we go. I like blank, blank, and blank. So looking at the previous um, examples, we can say, I like a friendly notebook and playing. There we go. So with the example prompt, now that we filled them in with one adjective, one noun, and one verb, and we chose the prompt, then we can try to describe how did we come, like that That will be the prompt in itself. So I like friendly notebooks and playing. Um, maybe you can describe why you like those things or whatever your heart desires, whatever makes sense. <laughs> but so now let us go to think about it. And I think um, we can come up with nouns, verbs, and adjectives. And I think at least will bring us over to it. Yeah. Right. Um, look, I have a friendly notebook, Cleo. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's got all these happy <laughs> colors. Um, that's probably what I would write about if I if my Mad Lib turned out to be about a friendly notebook. Um, yeah. So now that we know what Mad Libs are and what nouns, verbs, and adjectives are, we're gonna play this together. So as a first step, all of us, so you watching this, but also the three of us are gonna write down a noun, a verb, and an adjective. And try to think broadly, they don't have to have anything to do with each other. Um, yeah, so we're gonna start a timer of about two minutes. Um, so use those two minutes to come up with a noun, a verb, and an adjective. And if you're done, feel free to pause the video really quickly and show them to any adult around you, maybe a teacher, maybe a caregiver or a parent, and have them check that the words you wrote down are in fact a noun, a verb, and an adjective. All right, let's start our timer. All right, everybody, that was two minutes. I hope you all had time to write down a verb, a noun, and an adjective. So as our next step, now that you've written those down, um, the next step is the prompt. So the story with the blanks. So before we reveal the prompts that we wrote, so each of us three wrote a prompt 
and we're going to fill our words into each other's stories. Um, but we don't know each other's prompts. So <laughs> we've been very secretive about individually putting them on the slides so that we don't know what they're going to say. Um, we already know, like, I know that I'm going to fill in my words in Madeline's prompt. Um, but uh, for you, we want you to pick one of us three and decide ahead of time whose prompt you're going to fill your words into. So we don't want you to read the stories and then look at your words and quickly figure out what will make the most sense. No, we want you to pick a person and go with that. And if you think it's hard to pick a person, maybe just pick your favorite color because all three of our prompts are in a different color. Um, so yeah, take just 10 seconds right now to pick one of us three and maybe write down our name or the color for who you're gonna pick. All right, I hope you've all picked someone. And then each of us three is gonna reveal our prompts. Madeline, do you wanna start by revealing your prompt? I do. Okay, here we go. So my prompt is last night I, and then blank, across the blank. My friends all thought it was blank. So you're gonna do last night I, and then fill in your verb, across the, fill in your noun, and then my friends all thought it was, fill in your adjective. Nice. Okay, so my prompt was, I went to the adjective capital and saw blank. I blank them. So <laughs> take that as you will. And now it's Elise's. All right. Well, I wrote, it was nice and adjective outside this morning. I took my noun and went verbing. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start a new timer for six minutes. Fill in your adjective, your noun, your verb in the story, in the prompt of the person you chose or the color you chose. Um, and then use, so that only takes a minute, but then use the rest of those six minutes to come up with some sort of explanation, some story around why you were doing what you were doing, you know? Why, why do you like friendly notebooks and playing? <laughs> and we're gonna be doing the same. All right, so I'm gonna start the six minute timer now. See you soon.
All right, everyone, my timer just went off. So we've had six minutes to make sense <laughs> of whatever creative, unique Mad Lib story we created. Um, so I guess I'll start. I worked with Madeline's prompt. Can you go to the next slide, Cleo? <laughs> Thank you. So my words were, the noun I chose was artwork, the verb I chose was cooking, and the adjective I chose was purple. So my Mad Lip, well, Madeline's prompt with my words turned into, last night I cooked across the artwork. My friends all thought it was purple. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun working with that one. I'm figuring out how I cooked across an artwork and why my friends all thought it was purple. So here's what happened last night. I made a painting with edible paint. So if you've ever made cupcakes, you'll know those little tubes that you can squeeze to decorate the cupcakes. And they have them in all sorts of colors. And, um, you know, you can use those to decorate your cupcakes. But I actually used them last night to make a painting with the with this edible paint. Um, it was nice, it was a nice painting, um, but it was just the first step in my real plan, which was to make cupcakes. So instead of putting the uh, paint as decoration on the cupcakes after making the cupcakes, I did it in reverse. So I started by making a painting and then I made my cupcake dough using my edible art painting as a working surface. So I used it, I put the edible painting on my countertop and then I like made my cupcake dough working with that edible painting as my um, work surface. So that's how I cooked across the artwork last night. Um, I thought this was a really good idea. I thought it would be really pretty. I thought my cupcakes would be these sort of really nice, lovely like, you know, with like swirls of color here and there and like really pretty. Um, that's not what happened, however. Um, my painting had a lot of red and blue in it. And unfortunately, since I was still like kneading the cupcake dough um, on that artwork, um, my dough just turned purple. <laughs> so the cupcakes I ended up making with this our project were purple. So that's why my friends all thought it was purple. Um, however, I'm happy to say that they also all thought it was very delicious. That being said, I would recommend next time you first make the cupcakes and then put the paint on. So just like they say in all the instructions, don't flip them, it just becomes purple. <laughs> or if you use different colors, it might, you know, become one other different color, but it doesn't become that pretty. Um, yeah, so that's how last night I cooked across the artwork and my friends all thought it was purple. Thanks for the beautiful prompt, Madeline. <laughs> I like how you made sense of that, Elise. You definitely had to think about that, I'm sure. <laughs> oh yeah, it, was, it definitely sounded like it was fun and unique. Okay, so let's go to the next prompt. And this will be my prompt and Madeline is answering it. Yeah, so the noun I chose was trampoline and then the verb I picked was broke and then my adjective was scary. So when you fill that in, it reads, I went to the scary capital and saw tra trampolines, I broke them. So when I hear capital, I think of Madison in the capital downtown. And so the scary capital, um, I could see how it could be scary. Like a lot of high profile people work there, like the governor, Tony Evers, and he's pretty well known. So it might be pretty scary to be by him. And then, so maybe I was just intimidated and it's pretty strange that there would be trampolines at the Capitol, but I imagine trampolines outside the Capitol around the Capitol Square. So maybe it was for like the winter carnival or 
one of the farmers markets. But even with all that being as confusing as it is, I really don't understand why someone would break a trampoline because there's so much fun to play on. So maybe I accidentally broke it by like jumping too high or there was already a rip in it. But yeah, that's the only thing I can think of that would make sense. <laughs> Yeah, and it does make sense. Thank you, Madeline. I hope you enjoyed trying to figure that one out. <laughs> Gosh, okay. But now it is my turn. And I am doing Elisa's prompt. So the, the words I chose was hippopotamus, learn, and fun. So <laughs> yes, um, it was nice and fun outside this morning. And I took my hippopotamus and went learning. So let's let's try to figure this one out. The way I thought, well, let me, I, I chose the noun hippopotamus. I'm not sure what you know what it, a hippopotamus is, but it's a type of animal. And not only do I like saying hippopotamus, but I also have, this teddy bear, which is supposed to be a giant hippopotamus. So that's why I chose hippopotamus. <laughs> okay, so maybe you'll give me some leeway here. That being said, since I chose my noun based on a stuffed animal hippopotamus rather than an actual hippopotamus, because I think it'd be really scary to actually bring a real hippopotamus somewhere. They're very big and strong. Um, so it was nice and fun outside. I can imagine it being fun outside because it's getting, well, right now it's March. It's the first day of March actually. And it's been getting really nice and bright outside. So maybe it'd be a type of day like this. I'm looking outside my window and it looks so nice. Um, so it was nice and fun outside this morning. Yeah, I can imagine it being this morning. And so I took my hippopotamus and went learning. Well, I, maybe I went to school, but learning doesn't always have to be at school. So I imagined going to a programming that I used to volunteer at. It, it was at the Catholic Multicultural Center. And at this center, me, a few other volunteers, and some families would all cook together with a recipe that we all had to learn together. So that's what I imagined. So I took Tori, the name of my stuffed hippopotamus, and I went with Tori to the Catholic Multicultural Center, walking outside, of course, and then we went to learn how to cook a recipe with a lot of fun people. Oh my gosh, I love what you made out of that. And I'm so glad we got to meet Tori the hippopotamus. Um, I also totally, so just like you just sort of saw your hippopotamus and picked the word because of it. I totally picked purple for Madeline's story because purple is my favorite color. Also, I wanted to introduce my cat, Sophia, since I know she's been walking across my screen this whole time. Um, she really likes stories, so I think she's here to listen to our stories today. I admit. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. So I hope you guys enjoyed hearing our prompts and what our Mad Libs turned out as. So now it's your turn to share yours with us. So let us know what your noun was and your verb and your adjective, and let us know which prompt you chose, whether it was mine or Elise's or Cleo's. And then if you could fill it in and then maybe help explain what you think it means like we all did with ours. And if it doesn't make sense, that's all right. Um, we, you can always make it work. So please upload it and hopefully we can hear about it soon. So thanks for joining us this week. I hope you had fun and we'll see you guys next week, hopefully. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.